And now, Johnny, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Sorry, I forgot that before. No worries, no worries. I thought I did something wrong. I was like, whoa, whoa, what'd I do? Um, no, I was, gonna, I was saying that uh, I'll make this relatively quick. I started on Monday as Managing Director of the Fund. Um, so part of my responsibilities is to make sure that we're deploying capital back into the community and the small businesses that we serve, uh, that are part of our membership, uh, that's a part of our alliance that work with Jenny. Uh, and so um, right now for me, there isn't necessarily an update about the fund outside of what I am hoping to do. Uh, and then I have just a general question for the folks in here um, to the extent that you have a response. And so, um, so some of the things that uh, I'm thinking about in terms of really looking at the fund and really trying to understand where we are is just taking a look at what the pipeline is um, who are the small businesses that are in there? What are some of the information that's missing uh, from a general uh, data validation perspective? Um, reaching out to the investment committee, uh, which who I've met, had a really quick introduction with. Um, so I'll be reaching out to them uh, starting next week. Uh, and then looking at what does it mean to put together like a, a tier level in terms of uh, who's ready for conversation about investments, um, whether that's based on the time that they applied, whether that's based on the resources that they have available, uh, what does that, look, what does that uh, conversation look like? Uh, bringing that list to the investment committee, having a robust conversation about that, uh, and then hopefully being able to come back next month and provide a, re a report as to where we are, what the pipeline looks like, what does that tier look like, uh, how does the investment committee generally feel about it, uh, and where do we go and possibly a plan uh, for the rest of the year. So that's where I am. And my general question for the group is, um, I am wondering, and I won't necessarily have a response tonight, but I'm wondering, are there any uh, general questions about the fund that are still kind of lingering for you that you'd like clarity on uh, that I can come back to this space and kind of talk a little bit more about after uh, I get my feet wet a little bit? Is there anything that's burning that folks are just like, well, I'm aware of the funds, I know the fund exists, but here's one or two things that I'm still kind of trying to piece together for myself in terms of your own understanding. And it's okay if you don't have a burning question now, you do have a chat function. Uh, I will share my email as well. Um, and I know Siona has a question, um, but feel free to communicate that way as well too. And John, Siona, feel free to go first. Thanks, hey, Johnny. Um, very nice to meet you. And um, I guess I was just curious uh, what we might consider changing or pivoting uh, due to this kind of longer term COVID situation, mm -hmm. uh, both from the kind of the participant, um, the membership participation part in the fund, as well as uh, with the businesses that are applying uh, that we want to invite in to apply for a loan, things like that. And then the second piece is maybe, I, I don't really know a lot about the CARES program or the, uh, the small, group, uh, small business um, emergency fund piece mm -hmm. that we have. I, I'm assuming that's coming out of the fund. Um, I guess maybe just a quick status or overview. Um, might be interesting. Thanks. Thank you. John. Um, excuse me, I just missed that last um, question. A quick status and overview about what, Siona, if you don't mind repeating, I'm sorry. I believe it's called the emergency f grant or emergency fund from the Ujima fund. <laughs> okay, thank you. And if I might jump in really quickly, so Sienna is talking about the uh, Ujima Boston Resident and Worker Care Fund. So that's the fund that we uh, set up after the pandemic for uh, voting members of Ujima and uh, workers of businesses in our alliance. And so I'm, I am answering some of the questions in the chat so that it, you, I don't take up time uh, talking. And so I, what I just put in the chat really quickly is the care fund is separate from the Ujima fund. So that money isn't coming from there. Thank you, Nia. My, and, and Nia answered my question, wow, we're almost at two and a half million, which is halfway to the goal of five. So that's incredible. Um, and 
does that money all, I mean, is that invested at this point? I mean, I know there's one, where's it sitting? Sitting in cash in a bank or is it invested in bonds, stocks? Is it earning money? What's it doing? You want me to answer this? Please do. Yeah, so um, we have the one investment that we've made, which is in Cerro Co-op, the $100,000 investment. So because you all, if, if you are a voting member of Ujima, because you all determine the investments, um, you will know um, what, whatever investments we've made because you would, have, you would have told us that we can do so. So there won't be investments that are made um, without you uh, knowing. So yes, the rest of that money is sitting in a bank um interest rates are very very low uh and so one of our uh first kind of orders of business when uh johnny gets settled in is as johnny said looking at the pipeline um and seeing how we can thoughtfully uh deploy uh the money so that it isn't just sitting there um and it's it's being put to put to work and we want to do so thoughtfully So if there are additional questions, I will, I'm going to leave my email in the chat so folks can email me directly. Um, but my job is to come back with just some general overview in terms of where the funding is, uh, what we're looking to do within the next couple of months, just a general update uh, and provide any answers to some of the questions tonight that we couldn't answer. I think before we go to the next person, it, it occurs to me just even on that question of kind of um, how, how we're thinking about deployment, um, some extra bit of context that may be useful. Um, so, so there are, I would say right now, a couple of, and maybe I'm wrong, but a couple of major considerations um, that we are taking in and, and there will probably be, be more. Um, so one is um, right now, um, as in terms of immediate responses to this pandemic, and not only Ujima, but our peers and partners trying to be as responsive um, as possible, um, there is uh, money out there um, that is more attractive than uh, than uh, from the Ujima fund right now. So that's, so that's one of the things that we have to think about. And so what I mean by that is if, and, and it's, it's not even necessarily that this money has been super easy to access, but we just know it's there. So we know the issues with PPP, for example. Um, but uh, there are lots of grants out there right now. Um, and if you can kind of navigate uh, the maze of relationships and bureaucracy, uh, right now, that's better uh, than a 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8% loan from us. Um, there's also, there's PPP, again, what, whatever the issues um, uh, were and are with PPP. There are other, uh, there are SBA products um, uh, that, are, that are pretty favorable. Um, and then even outside of grants, when we're looking at loans, there are 0% loans that are available. And again, it's not, you know, snap your fingers um, for, for some people. Right. And Hendrix has put in the chat, they're not enough for sure. Um, and, and so again, it's not kind of snap your fingers and, and, you're, and you're good and you're good to go. Again, you still have to navigate some bureaucracy, you have to navigate some relationships. Um, definitely, definitely know businesses, including some in our network that haven't been able to get anything, um, even, even, with, even with everything that's out there. Um, but that is a conversation. Um, and we've talked about this a little bit at our investment committee meeting last week, and we got some good feedback from Maya, et cetera. Um, but our conversation is, uh, we do have to be able to answer the question, if a business does have an option, and, and, and there was a business that was in our pipeline that did have such an option, and that did put off a conversation until later, and that said, actually, we don't, really, we don't need to talk right now. Um, there are other reasons we're interested in the Ujima besides just capital. 
Um, so we can still talk, but we just, we just don't need to talk right now. We'll talk later. Um, and so we do need to be able to have um, a sound uh, logic for if you are a business um, that is seeing a little more access than you otherwise would have, um, why you would engage in a conversation very specifically about the Ujima Fund um, right now. Some feedback that we got from Maya, et cetera, um, is uh, the relationship mattered a lot. So the experience was very important to Cero. Um, so in terms of not having to go through a certain type of bureaucracy um, and actually having a relationship and so not being out in the cold because there wasn't one, which we saw happen with PPP. Um, and, and, the converse, and even on the bureaucracy part, the conversation being different. Um, and there's also conversation about the additional support that we provide uh, in addition to capital. So the technical assistance, but then also, I think just speaking to the power of relationship, not only the relationship with the staff team, but relationships with members. Um, so those are the types of conversations that we're having as, as we're thinking about how we um, try to uh, deploy uh, thoughtfully. Um, and, and the other thing is just uh, asking ourselves the question, to, to your question, Siona, asking ourselves the same question. So what kind of pivot um, is the best kind of pivot, if, if there is one? Um, we, before the pandemic, already knew we kind of needed to um, diversify the businesses uh that we had in our in our pipeline so that was something that we were already angling towards so that's still a conversation um so just to give you an, an idea of, of 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 the couple of considerations that are going into it, and there will be more um because this is constantly uh evolving do you mind if i just throw one thing out there not that you have to answer this tonight but just thinking about the near future of our small businesses that have taken out, say, a, a tougher loan with another institution. Is there maybe a potential for us to provide some kind of buyout for them? Or I don't know how you what you call it in the finance world, but to buy out their loans or um, kind of help, like, bring them into our fund by alleviating their commercial loan or whatever i don't know anyway just yeah, that's yeah. another thought of a pivot i guess yeah yeah that's a possible like a restructure of a current debt that they have with another lender um we can do that and i think um part of what i should have opened up with is the fact that i've been working in the boston space for a while i've lived here uh all of my life i uh, have worked uh uh I think majority of my work with small businesses have been kind of in the CDC world, community development corporations. Uh, has spent a couple of years working with Interise, a small business um, supporter, a technical assistance organization. And my last position was director of economic development for a CDC and supporting small businesses and lending to them as well as providing technical assistance. So part of this relationship piece is that I am coming in with some of these existing relationships uh, as well. Uh, and so I do have a portfolio of businesses that are like, we're, we're going wherever you're going. Uh, and, and my job and my response is, well, you need to understand what Ujima is, what the mission is, and the collective agreement in terms of the, the community process. And so my job is to educate folks about that as I learn. Um, but second, I also think that when we talk about businesses that are looking for restructuring, which I imagine will, will be part of the case as I continue doing outreach and talking about what we do and how we do it, um, is that those would be relationships through other institutions. And I think uh, other institutions, considering the, the relationships I currently have now, would be open to a conversation like that. Uh, because at the end of the day, what we should be talking about is for the betterment of the small businesses, not necessarily just for the institution. And so if, as long as that's at the forefront of the conversation, I don't see why not. So, uh, but I'll leave it there uh, in that tidbit, unless you want to add any more, Nia. One more, just on the pipeline front. So uh, this went out in our wire this morning. Um, we uh, are partnering up with BECMA and a slew of other co-hosts that includes Boston Impact Initiative, Commonwealth Kitchen, Foundation for Business Equity, Amplify Latinx, The Collier Connection, King Boston, and U.S. Haitian Chamber 
of commerce um, on a week of activities that includes a business to business assembly. Um, so this will be our second business to business assembly. The first we had as part of the Blue Hill Corridor assembly that we did in partnership with Black Economic Justice Institute. Um, and so this is part of this diversification conversation. So the reason why we're very, we, we did a business to business assembly before um, and why we uh, want to make sure we kind of do different types of specialized assemblies like that um, is to be able to get in uh, different types of names into the process. And so that business to business assembly is happening July 21st, eight o'clock to 11 a.m. Um, as I said, it went out in our wire this morning. So uh, it's, at the, it's at the top of the wire, the save the date links to a Facebook invite. So I encourage you to send that out to business owners in your network. Um, and so the idea behind that is to hear from business owners who they vend with, because we want to try to get more B2Bs uh, into uh, our uh, pipeline. And so we figure um, that they probably interact with them a little more than, than we do as regular consumers. So that's July 21st, eight o'clock to 11 a.m. And so we will see our list uh, expand from there. Um, there's a social networking hour the night before for those business owners uh, from 7.30 to 8.30. Um, and again, um, ultimately, you all will be voting on those businesses. So they will generate the list at this event. Um, that'll be the first pass. The second pass list before you uh, for a vote. So you'll see you'll see those businesses yourself. All right. Looks like thank you, Johnny. It looks like Jenny has something. Were you waving for to go, Jenny? No, I was right waving, saying goodbye to whoever was logging off. <laughs> uh, okay, bye, Rashawn. Um, right, so let's see. G I want to I want to check in with James since James started with us a couple of weeks ago, just to see not to put you on the spot or anything, James, but to see if there's anything that you wanted to talk with uh, the group about or ask. Bye, uh, bye, Callie. Um, hey y'all, this is James, he, him, his, um, he caught me, like, and I just put in, I just put, like, a spoon of rice in my mouth, so I'm eating as I respond, and so, so it'll be okay. Um, so, no, I, I think I'm, so I've been, I guess, officially with Jima for, like, almost two weeks, I think, um, or about two weeks, yeah, um, so, still really really fresh and um just trying to figure it all out and i think trying to settle into like a new practice and i think the, the biggest thing i think i would maybe request from folks is is in an in, in an interest in connecting and an interest in like learning from you all about like you know why you support this work and and ways in which i can like support you um I would love to create space to connect um, and do that. And so if y'all wanna like reach out to me via email and set up like some time, we can do like a virtual situation or if you're like, you know, comfortable and close, we can do like a JP walk or like a walk around the pond. Like I love a, I love a daytime day situation. So definitely open to that. Um, so yeah, I'll just drop my email if folks want to connect. I'm totally down to that. But I think that's um, sort of where I'm at. I think I'm still trying to sort of figure things out. But um, I'm, I hope to come back and sort of engage you guys um, as much as I can. Thank you, James. Anybody else? Claudia, Sierra, Jenny? And James just, uh, oh, Jenny, just put your information out there, James but also told you to enjoy your rice. <laughs> you guys hear me? <laughs> yep, Sierra. Yeah. Awesome, really quickly, I just wanted to let everybody know that tomorrow, tomorrow is the last day that we will, well, anybody will have to apply to the Arts and Culture Organizing Fellowship. Um, I was the inaugural fellow, it's been a great year. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to just like chat me privately and I can send you my email. Um, 
but yeah, so it's a, a one year fellowship, $10,000 uh, stipend, um, and a myriad of other awesome opportunities to engage with community. Uh, I'm going to drop the application in the chat. Uh, and just a reminder, it is only available to us. Uh, so if anybody's interested, feel free to email me or chat me. Go. Thank you. Sorry, so I time. missed it. It's only available to who? Uh, uh, to Boston Junior Project members. Thanks. Cool. Thank you, Sierra. Jenny, Claudia. All right, John. Great to see you as always. Have a good night. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Claudia. Um, I just want to congratulate everybody um, for all the work for the virtual gala, gala last week. Um, it was a totally amazing experience. Um, had so much fun working with Sierra and Mia and folks from UCB and James on um, getting that together and lifting that up off the ground. Um, and we did make, what, what is the final number, Mia? Uh, hold on, I actually have it up. The final number is, so this is net, uh, $24,519. Putting it in the yeah. chat. Yeah, so it was um, an amazing evening with um, poetry, some drag, some um, testimonials from so many people that are involved in um, both of our organizations. And it was just an evening of love overflowing for sure. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, I think we should all be proud of the work that was done. Um, in addition to that, I think, um, you know, with, um, with Team Auto Generate, um, during the pandemic, we had started um, Necessary Systems Daily, um, which is a um, social media campaign that we started in March that was really focused on um, giving people um, prompts um, in order to kind of tether themselves back into, um, into self-care, into organizing, and really being able to um, promote that, um, how, you, how you can turn up within spaces and how you can turn up for, for yourself and in a form of um, giving people different options um, to meet them at their different capacities. Um, and also sort of a framework um, showing uh, where the work is being done in terms of the new normal that we wanna return back to. Um, but I think in saying that, um, I'm just curious, and I don't know if Sierra, you have any thoughts on this, if there's just sort of um, any thoughts on a direction that could go in, um, what you feel like has been successful about that um, project thus far. Um, we kind of need a little like new um, bump of excitement to, to, um, to jump into with that. So if anybody has any suggestions um, on that or any, any work that you've seen being done that sort of surrounds that same um, framework, um, yeah, sure. Or any questions for the communications team, really? Cool, thank you. And we do have a comms address. I just can't remember if it's comms at ugmaboston.com or communications at ugmaboston.com. I think it's comms. Try both. So I'm just going to put them. <laughs> Uh, and so if you'd like to provide some feedback to Claudia and Sierra, I'm pretty sure it's comms at ugmaboston.com. Um, if that kicks back, then we set up communications at ugmaboston.com, but I'm pretty sure it's comms. Um, Callie said he missed that, uh, Claudia. I think probably maybe the last two sentences you said. Yeah. Um, I was just, um, I dropped into the chat, the Necessary Systems website, um, and I think um, I was just saying if anybody has thoughts or um, ideas for um, Necessary Systems daily actions um, that you can that you can let us know or if you have anything you wanna share about that project. 
Great, thank you, Claudia. And we're essentially at time, we're at 7.22. So before I break us out, um, I think for my portion, I just wanna reiterate uh, the week of activities that we're doing with BECMA. Um, and again, that went out in our wire this morning. It's called To Possess Freedom, once again. Um, we talk about the inspiration for that title, Monk Biography in the Facebook event. Um, so I encourage you to find your way there and just read that, read the excerpt uh, from that biography, which is wonderful, by the way, just as far as uh, that genre goes, uh, just brilliantly written by Robin uh, D.G. Kelly. Um, so I've, I talked about the Monday night social networking for uh, business owners, the Tuesday assembly for business owners. Again, please get that out to business owners in your uh, networks. Um, it's for them. So it's for them. And this is how they get into the pipeline, for example, if they've not been previously named. And again, we want to hear who they do business with so that we can start to hear about more businesses. Uh, Thursday of that week is our Black on Black Investing workshop that we're doing in partnership with the Collier Connection and Ujima's Black Investor uh, Committee. Uh, and then we wrap up the week on Monday, July 27th with a Black Trust uh, with Marie Sanflor, uh, who's a former uh, state rep of Massachusetts and really excited to hear from her. And we're gonna meet uh, soon. Uh, just just for her to talk about what's on her mind and um, suss out a, a, a theme or a topic for that talk. Sierra may be adding one or two events to that week. So uh, we'll be updating the Facebook event and the Eventbrite. Um, so Sierra may be adding um, a lecture uh, to, to that uh, week. So Sierra, uh, in addition to Ujima, uh, I think she, I think she might've mentioned this, uh, founded Print Ain't Dead with uh, Ariel Gray, and so they have an offshoot of that called Lectures Ain't Dead. So uh, that event may get added to the week. Um, so again, please circulate that again to the business owners of your network. And I, I named the co-hosts. We are going to reach out to more co-hosts. Um, so as you as you think of more, um, I am going to reach out to Children's Hospital, for example. So we, I am going to be looking to bring anchor institutions into the conversation to hear from them to help us frame uh, the questions again, so that we're really getting um, a, a nice, healthy uh, list of names. So I'm going to reach out to Children's Hospital, BMC, uh, and uh, if you have any other ideas, um, maybe Anchor Institution team. Um, if there are some people you you'd like me to reach out to, or you think would be a good idea for me to reach out to them to co-host the event and send it to their networks, um, please let me know. I wonder. Um, I don't know if it. I'll check there was, um, I don't know if there would be like a space for this, but um, I'm wondering how people that are part of the gig economy kind of fit into, um, or if that would be like a completely separate conversation um, or something we should, could consider in a separate realm. But um, I'm just curious about um, like thoughts on that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would say if they do work because we're trying to get particular types of we're trying to get list of b2b's if they work with b2b's um if they themselves identify as business owners i think they can show up for sure cool all right and then jenny i just presume that you probably were good for tonight was that right okay all right excellent um, so this wraps up this portion of the meeting. I'm going to stop the recording now.